everybody. For those of you that don't know me, my name is Monica and I suffer from trigeminal neuralgia. And I say that to say that I have had many, many MRIs, I think six or seven. And so today I had to have another MRI for something else, but it was still an MRI on the brain. And uh, I hate them. I absolutely hate them. They are the most claustrophobic things that a human can be put through other than be buried alive. I hate them. So I thought while I was lying in there hating it, um, wouldn't it be nice to have a video that could tell people the little steps you could do to get through it so you don't freak out and don't panic because it's very panic inducing if you are claustrophobic. So I'm here to share with you the things that got get me through and got me through mine today. So uh, number one, make sure that you ask your family doctor for some lorazepam or uh, Ativan, whatever the name, it doesn't have to be a name brand, but it's a relaxant and it relaxes you enough that it can take the edge off. And um, I have no idea what milligrams you need or anything. You can talk that over with your family doctor. You can't buy it over the counter, but yeah. So when you take that, it make, like you can tell I'm a little sleepy-ish. It makes you a little relaxed. So if I was to blink too long, I might not wake up. I might not open my eyes for the video. So number one, get something to relax yourself. Something out of van or whatever relaxes you. Number two, be sure to tell them once you arrive at the hospital or the building where you're having it done, that you've taken Ativan or what else, whatever else you've taken, and tell them that you're very afraid and very claustrophobic. Because they will take such good care of you if they know that. So you will go in, they will ask you to put all of your metal things in a locker. They give you a key. So you put your purse, your phone, anything that might have metal on it, your shoes, if there's buckles on anything like that. So my key is to do not wear any jewelry at all if you're MRI, then you don't have to worry about it. Leave your rings, your earrings, your necklaces, your bracelets, your watch, everything at home. Uh, so then they'll ask you if you have any metal on you in your clothing, because I just had a dress on and I said, just my bra clip. So they put you in a change room and just asked you to remove your bra. I didn't have to put on a gown. Sometimes, most times I've had to, this time I didn't have to because my dress was as simple as a hospital gown. It was just like a shift. So, um, and then once you've done all that, I always bring a pair of socks for my feet because it's comforting and it feels nice and I don't want to walk on a dirty floor so I always bring a pair of socks and then they call you in and they lay you down on the table and the where you're the tunnely machine you're going into it looks like a tunnel and it might help you to look it up online so you can see what an MRI machine looks like and I'm talking specifically about MRIs of the head neck area because that's really the only kinds I've ever had um, they lay you down they put your head in this cradle kind of thingy and it your head just just fits in there and then they stuff these pads in and once they do that you can't hear them very well like they're talking but it's like you can't it's muffly and then he puts oh before that because he knows you're nervous, he puts a face cloth over your eyes. So you don't have to see the initial going in and having the machine this close to your face. That's very scary, especially if you go in up to your hips. 
and you're in there for a long time. So he puts a face cloth over your eyes. So you don't have to see that. And you can adjust it to fit however you want. You go in and then I said about the ear thing, but then he put um, headphones on you and he talks to you through the headphones. And there was a lady there too, an MRI tech, and she also, as you're going into the machine, she lays a hand on you. So you know she's there. And as long as she can, before she can't reach in anymore, but she lays her hand on you. And that is very, very comforting. Because you know somebody's, it's like, I don't know, it's a very weird feeling. It's like somebody's there. I can do this if somebody's holding my hand, that kind of feeling. So then while you're in there, it's a very loud. There's usually three or four series of tests that they do, all with different sounds. They're really loud. They always blow cool air through the other end of the machine so you don't feel so claustrophobic. But if they don't, be sure to ask for that. And then before you know it, it's over. And you're like me, a little loopy right now. But your test is done and you're none the worse for wear. So that's my tips on having an MRI, especially of the head. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's scary, but you can do it, you know. It's, and you have to marvel at the medical industry, or not medical, whatever you want to call it that they can do that without having to open up your brain. Okay, that's it. I'm gonna go home and sleep this off. This, that bad. Bye.